In this video, I'm gonna be sharing 10 tips on how you can create authentic, cinematic, and engaging videos. Not with this, but only with this. I received a lot of questions and requests on my last YouTube video, A Letter to Tunisia, that was entirely filmed on iPhone 15 Pro Max, to share some insights about how I planned, filmed, and edited this video to make it look like it was filmed on an expensive camera rather than on an iPhone. Let's start with the basic settings. If you don't get these right, your footage will look unprofessional from the get-go. Firstly, the biggest upgrade from previous iPhones, and the reason that I first now decided to create a short film with the iPhone is the new function and capability of filming in ProRes Log. I will go into more details later in the video about just how good this log profile is compared to the normal iPhone colors. But let me tell you quickly, the bottom line is that the image is less digitally sharp, the dynamic range is a lot better, and this flat and less compressed color profile provides more opportunities to tweak the colors in post. Disclaimer though, these files are huge so make sure you have enough storage available. I filmed about two terabytes on my five to six day trip to Tunisia, which is comparable to what I do with my Blackmagic 6K Pro. You should always film in 4K, either in 30 or 60 FPS. I personally think that the 24 FPS that the iPhone produces looks surprisingly choppy and laggy. Keep in mind that if you want to film 4K 60 FPS in ProRes Log, you will need an SSD attached to the phone to enable this function. But I did actually find a workaround how you can avoid using an SSD completely, and I will tell you a little bit more about that in just a second. I personally don't use the in-body stabilization on the phone uh, since I use a gimbal, but if you're filming handheld, this could be a good option to enable. Make sure to lock the white balance as well to avoid the color changing mid-video and lastly, since you don't want the clip to change exposure mid-clip either, you have to lock the camera before every shot, meaning you lock the exposure and the focus. You do this by pressing down on the subject you want in focus for about a second until this box appears on your screen. So far, so good in the native iPhone app. But a big, big flaw is that although you can lock the exposure, you cannot dial in the shutter speed and ISO manually, which obviously is a very important thing to be able to control for anyone trying to achieve more professionally looking videos. This is because you want to keep the shutter speed in that juicy 180 degree rule for a natural motion blur. You can try to fake it partly in post, but honestly, it looks a bit cheap and messy in most cases. So to be able to adjust these parameters, you need to turn into a third party app. And let me tell you guys, this was something I had a very hard time finding to begin with. Filmic Pro was an app that a lot of people recommended, but I personally didn't have a very good first impression of the app. Perhaps they just haven't released an update for the iPhone 15 Pro yet, uh, I'm not sure. But the image just looked a lot worse when recorded through the app, both quality and color wise. But then midway through the trip, I got recommended to try the Blackmagic app from one of my friends. And I can safely say that this was everything I was looking for. I could now adjust the shutter speed and ISO. By having control over this, you can make sure that the ISO is as low as possible. Something very important. This because the smaller sensor of the iPhone and higher ISO number naturally results in very noisy and unusable images. I stumbled upon some issues, however. Firstly, on the screen, it looked like it was overexposed whilst it was underexposed in reality making it a bit difficult to expose the video properly. If this bug hasn't been fixed with updates yet, you can try to take advantage of the histogram instead to make sure that you expose properly. However, with the app, you can access the 4K 60 FPS in ProRes log without an SSD, recording straight onto the app. Besides this, you can also reduce the file sizes in the codex tab by changing the codex to Apple ProRes 422 or 422 Lite. Yet another benefit with this app that I wish I found out before my trip to Tunisia. In terms of gear and accessories, I used an ND filter. This to be able to keep the shutter speed right even in bright conditions. The filter I used in Tunisia, however, created more issues than it patched up. It introduced ugly banding, color shifts, as well as reflections from the filter glass, really highlighting the importance of only putting high quality glass and filters in front of your camera. 
So I also use a gimbal to achieve additional reach, smoother shots, as well as more creative movements. The in-body stabilization is incredible though, but it will just never be the same as getting the shot stable from the beginning, as it leaves motion blur marks on the video, something you can't get rid of afterwards. One of my favorite new functions is the action mode. It's an incredible addition and works in all focal lengths. But the one I ended up using the most was the 5 time zoom. By combining the 5 time zoom, action mode and the gimbal, you can achieve some very dynamic and powerful sweeping shots. And believe me, all these shots I just showed you would not be usable without the action mode. The focal lengths you have access to is the following. 30 mm, 24 mm, 48 mm, and if you have the Pro Max, 120 mm, and if you have the Pro instead of the Pro Max, you will have a 3 times zoom instead of a 5 times on the Max. By varying between these different focal lengths, you will make your video feel more interesting and professional. It's like you brought multiple different lenses with you on set, but without having to carry all these multiple extra kilos. Let me tell you, this convenience was definitely refreshing compared to my previous trip when I brought my Blackmagic camera with additional lenses, drones, everything. All in a camera bag that at points actually has been weighing up to 15 kilos. Now back to the importance of the ProRes log I talked about before. To show this, let's jump onto the computer to really demonstrate the difference and how to turn these flat and grey log videos into something more like this, colourful and appealing. Let's start with a color correction to bring back some contrast in the clip. Adjust exposure and white balance to put the video in a neutral place. I then go to the RGB curves to start with a more stylized grain. Adding some warmth into the clip since it's a sunset and then go to the color wheel to add some more blues to the shadows and yellow and oranges to the highlights and midtones. This to bring some balance into the colors since blue and orange are complementary colors. I then create a mask to darken this rather uninteresting part of the image and hence bring in more contrast into the clip and attention to the sunset and person standing on the rock. And with that, here is the before and after. A transformation that wouldn't be possible if it was recorded in the normal iPhone colors. I start off by copying and pasting the basic color correction from the previous clips to save time and make sure to keep a consistent tone from clip to clip. After that, I adjust the exposure, add some warmth and saturation, and push the blues a bit more towards that teal color. The final clip. I start off by bringing down the temperature to introduce some more greens into the image. I want to make sure the road is a bit more orange to bring some additional color contrast between the greens in the grass and the oranges in the road. And then we finish off with with some final contrast and saturation changes, so we get it to where we like it. If you want to take a shortcut and avoid this a little bit longer process, I have now launched my LUTs that is specially made for phone footages, including a conversion LUT for the flat Apple log color profile. After the conversion LUT, you just add any of my four LUTs to the clip. Here you can see the immediate effect it has on the colors of the clip. Don't be afraid to mix the LUTs too for a different result. Make sure to use the discount code ERICYOUTUBE15 for an additional 15% off your next order. You will find the link in the description below. So guys, I'm currently back in Sweden right now, as you can see from the environment. One of the biggest flaws with the camera on phones in general is the lack of depth of field. This is a consequence of the smaller sensor. Apple tried to solve this with the cinematic mode, which I personally think just isn't good enough. You can quickly tell that it's faked and it often creates flicker on the edges of your subject. There are some smaller tricks however how you can achieve that shallow depth of field in your shots. First of all, by using the 2 times or 5 times zoom. Thanks to the compression the zoom generates, the depth of field kinda comes as a package deal. And secondly, the closer you get to your subjects, the more shallow depth of field you will achieve. So the battery on the iPhone 15 Pro Max has been amazing so far, except for when I'm filming. Filming has drains the battery like crazy. So I actually emptied the entire battery in three to four hours of filming in Tunisia. 
So let me highlight the importance of bringing power banks on your adventures. Bringing a power bank as well as an extra time to spare for charging. Another issue I encountered in Tunisia, which might not be as much of a problem here in Sweden, was overheating. The phone first turned down the screen brightness to cool itself, making it close to impossible to see anything on the screen in bright conditions, and hence extremely difficult to film anything. And if that doesn't help, you will receive this warning message, locking the phone until it's cooled down. Advice number eight is to introduce a lot of movements in your shots. For instance, hyperlapses, using a gimbal, by using foregrounds, by filming activities, and by taking time lapses. A little tip, don't film time lapses in the native iPhone camera app. It might be a little bit more convenient, but the quality is a lot worse and after all the compressions, I would say the footage is barely usable. It is very important to vary the pace of your videos, meaning finding a balance between slower shots and faster ones. This can be achieved by using different frame rates, showing the passing or slowing down of time in an authentic way. That is slow motion, 120 FPS, 60 FPS, and then use the 30 FPS for normal speed. You can also use time lapses or hyperlapses to show the passing of time in a creative way. Finally, the last way to make a video stand out and increasingly more interesting to watch might be, and I want to emphasize this, might be to introduce transitions. I will not dive too deep into details in this video as I've been talking for too long now, but the key to good transitions is to look for similarities between shapes, colors, luminance, as well as motions, to name a few. You want to make the video more fluid with your transitions, taking the viewer from one location to the next. With that said, transitions can be distracting if it's not used correctly and in moderation. Let's break down one of my favorite effects from the video. Here are the two clips we are working with. I create all my effects and transitions inside of After Effects, but the theories can just as easily be applied in any other editing software. I start off by stabilizing the clips, this to make the next steps such as creating masks a lot easier. I then color grade both clips to match the colors and luminance in especially the skies, just to make the fade between the two different clips a lot more seamless. I then throw on the effect gradient wipe onto the second clip, just to easily mask out the opening in the stairs. It works pretty well this time since the sky is so much brighter than the rest of the clip, but in other cases I would use the normal mask or the rotoscope tool to, to mask out the gap in the stairs. I then create a duplicate of the stairs clip, this time to smoothly fade the sky back into the final edit. I do this by a simple opacity change. As you can see here, the gradient wipe isn't perfect however, so I make sure to create a second duplicate of this clip to clean up this part of the image using a mask. I then finished the edit off by pre-composing the clips and adding a pixel motion blur to blend everything and the motion together even more. And voila, here is the final edit. Here is one of my favorite transitions from the video, but also the simplest in terms of editing. As I mentioned before, if you can find similar elements between different clips, the transitions will be a lot more seamless. In this case, both clips had a section where the sand was thrown towards the camera making for a perfect transition point. I simply just made a normal fade between the clip that took just a few seconds to add. Well, that was it for this video. I've had a blast creating phone-related content for the last month and receiving all your positive feedback. Please let me know in the comments if you have any further questions and if you feel like I perhaps missed any topics in this video, I'm very happy to answer them all. And with that said, give a like, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. Button. You can zoom in while you vlog like this. Oh, beautiful. So now this allows me and Eric to just travel with the backpack.